So with today's content, we're going to take a look at the IP uh, products promotion that is uh, based on the different IPC families that we have. So in this case, we'll start with taking a look at uh, the IPC overview uh, based on this um, based on the products um, and regardless to the triangle that we have here, that's basically going to uh, redistribute the products based on different categories and the different functionalities uh, the products will have in terms of uh, the power performance and some of the AI capabilities um, enhanced on these particular products. So we'll begin from, let's say for example, from the bottom here, going upwards to the apex of uh, the triangle. So at the bottom here, we have all the entry series products. And uh, these are basically categorized as the low-end products. Now, the term low-end products does not necessarily that the products are not going to give you that uh, surveillance in terms of security that you need. So uh, the term low-end products basically implies that these are, are supposed to give you that uh, basic surveillance. And uh, these particular products, they don't have those other intelligent functions uh, like this other high-end product. It's only that uh, they have a few uh, AI features and some other uh, functions that they can give you in terms of those daily uh, daily surveillance of the places that they're mounted. Then alongside that, we have the WeSense 2 and 3 uh, and with uh, the light uh, series products. So the light series products, they're basically within this category, the WeSense 2 and the WeSense 3 series. So we have the WeSense series and the light uh, products, light series. So in this case, these products are basically regarded to be uh, highly cost-effective products, whereby they are easy to get in the market. And again, the prices are that affordable. So moving upwards, we have the middle-end products. And these are basically from the WeSmind 4 series to the WeSmind 5 series. You can take a look at the WeSmind series here and the five series these are high quality strong performing uh, camera products that will give you some more added advantages over the we sense 2 and the we sense 3 series product so these are regarded as the middle end products then from the wizmind 7 wizmind 8 and special series with the panorama with the wizmind panoramic series these are basically regarded as the high end products so this simply because these product families or product categories, they actually have more AI functions and features embedded to them. Plus, if you compare the uh, AI algorithms on these products, they're simply higher than the ones that we have on the WizMind uh, 5 series and the WizMind uh, 4 series. So in this case, these products are basically uh, regarded as project-based products and uh, they're kind of slightly expensive compared with the WizMind 5 for you get to the light entry series. So in this case, we have different vertical markets that the WizMind 7, 8, the special series and the WizMind panoramic series can accommodate or can be used for such um, projects. So here's an example of the product lines that we have for the IPCs. And uh, in this case, we have the IPC products maps. So we have two categories here. We have the distribution end and the project end um, product lines. So in the distribution, we have two types. We have the WeSense series and the entry series. So in each and every of these distributions, we have different subcategories for um, the product types on these categories. For example, the light entries, we have the series one. Then again, we have the wireless uh, series. You can take a look at some of these examples of these products that we have here. Uh, on the wireless, we have uh, the solar panel network, solar powered network uh, cameras. Then again, we have the Wi-Fi enabled uh, IPCs. So, Now, when you take a look at uh, the WeSense, it's divided into two uh, categories. That's the, the three series, the WeSense three series and the WeSense two series. And alongside that, we have more subcategories for the two 
uh, product series is on the WeSense 3 series, we have the TOC series, that's the, the three-in-one cameras that have some other key features into each, uh, including the active deterrent, the smart flow lighting, and the artificial intelligence. When you go to the WeSense 3 series, uh, we have some other uh, key features that have been added to this product just to ensure that it gives that optimal performance in terms of uh, surveillance. So and some of those key features include the quick pick uh, functions or features, the smart motion detection uh, 4.0 with an accuracy rate of 99%. Uh, percent. And again, we have uh, the AI self scene adaptation. So some of these functions which have been included in the T uh, on the WeSense 3 series. So on the WeSense 2, we have the smart dual light cameras. We have the two series with each and every of these particular products having their own kind of uh, improvement uh, and some other features. Now, if we deviate slightly away from the distribution, we have the project uh, end uh, product lines. And these include starting from the WizMind family, panoramic family, and special uh, series. So to all of these, we have some other subcategories for uh, the WizMind. We have the WizMind 5 series, WizMind 7 series, and the WizMind 8. Uh, with different AI features and different performance uh, aspects for these three product lines. From the panoramic, we have the multi-sensor uh, cameras. We have the fisheye cameras, again, with different features, uh, which are basically going to act as like competitive edge over the other products. Then the special series uh, cameras, where we have the penal series. So in this case, uh, for today's, learning we are going to restrict ourselves uh, from the WizMind family but from the series five all the way to the distribution end then another day we're going to talk about more on the WizSense 7 series with uh, WizSense WizMind 8 sorry WizMind 7 8 and the panoramic with some other special uh, products so for today we're going to discuss from the WizMind 5 all through to uh, the NT series for uh, the distribution end so before we begin, let's take a look at some of the naming rules we're supposed to get to know just to uh, make it easier for us to identify the products that we are talking about from the lights, uh, the entry series to the WizMind uh, 5 series. So in this case, this is uh, the naming rule for all the products that we have. So we're going to start with the, the first part, that's DH, just to show that this is a DAWA product. Then we have IPC, that show that this is an IP uh, camera. Then we have the camera type, basically going to be uh, going to be identified from this particular section here. So we have uh, the H for high definition. Uh, that's a uh, high def. Then we have uh, if let's say for example this was uh, so this is a bullet, HFW. That's an IR bullet. You can see it from this other end. Then if let's say for example you not have this W, that could show that this camera product is a box camera. So we have the HDP for, for example, the plastic uh, dome. We have HDPW, this particular section here. If we had HDPW, show that that's a plastic IR uh, dome. So we have so many camera types and each, each camera type has its own model number. And that model number is basically going to be broken down into different sections and each sections will imply something yeah. specific uh, on that yeah. particular uh, camera. So we have the camera type that's from this other end. There are so many of them. Yeah. Then we have the platform. So from the camera type, we'll move on to the platform. Now this platform uh, will identify um, the product line of that particular product. For example, mm -hmm. in this case here, this shows that this is a WizMind 5 series. If it uh, it was a WizMind, for example, WizMind 3, it will be a 3 here. So if it's an entry series or light series, it will either be either 1 or a 2. Uh, for WizMind 7 and 8, it will be, for example, here 7 or 8 again. So in this case, the platform is another important part. Then we have the resolution end. So the second value here from the camera type, that's the resolution. So we have different streams of resolutions for each and every uh, products that we have. So starting all the way from, for example, one 
2 megapixels, 3 megapixels, 5, there's 4 megapixels, there's 6, there's 8, there's 12, 16, 32 megapixels. So if this end here was, for example, 32, that will show that that is a, a camera product with 32 megapixels mm -hmm. uh, in terms of its resolution. Mm -hmm. So we have the generation this for the uh, other end. So this generation mm -hmm. defines um, the type of, uh, let's say, for example, either the CCD or the CMOS sensor. And again, so some other generations, generation for example, AI generation or, for example, H265 uh, generation, mm -hmm. that's terms of uh, compression. Then the second generation. So if this was, let's say, for example, a zero, so that that's, we see that that is a, a CMOS uh, sensor. If it was a one, that is basically a CCD sensor. Uh, since it's a four, that shows that this particular product uh, is from uh, its generation, basically an AI generation. So I'm playing that these can perform some other AI uh, enabled features. Then we have the functions. Now these functions here, uh, these are basically going to dictate um, the image qualities in terms of, let's say for example, in places where we have low light conditions. So we have functions from standard functions, WDR or starlight functions. We have starlight plus functions, the polar light functions and the full color functions. So this, function at this particular section here, that is the fourth value from uh, the camera type. This end will dictate um, the illumination, ability of uh, the camera just to provide you with color, uh, better images in places where we have low illumination. Then we have uh, some other continuation features. We'll take a look at the next uh, part because this is a, a part one of two. So let's take a look at from this point. So this is basically going to show the appearance uh, or the casing, the appearance of the, the product. And this is a, basically uh, the video format. So at this point, that's the appearance. So you have different appearances for different, each and every products that you have. So for example, E here yeah, shows that this, this basically can either be an IR bullet, can either be an IR dome or a single IR LED with plastic uh, eyeball. So uh, let's say, for example, this was uh, H, I mean, for example, G, that will show that that's an indoor uh, dome. If it, let's say, for example, was an M, uh, this particular section here, that will leave, for example, an S model, metal eye pole, or long IR uh, bullet. So we have these appearances for these particular products, and each camera comes with a different appearance. And that appearance will always be included in the model number of, uh, the model uh, number of the product so p uh, this will never change we only have two types of video formats either pal or ntc depending on the region that you are in so our region we mostly use uh, pal then we have some other more common functions for these particular products so a z here implies that that is a motorized uh, the camera comes the motorized um, lens you can see it from this other end we have a z somewhere here that's some, the camera comes with a motorized lens. Uh, if let's say, for example, we had, let's say, um, let's say S here, we'll show that the camera supports SD card. If we had, let's say, for example, A at this particular section, we'll show that the camera supports or maybe has an inbuilt uh, mic. Then this S2, they specifically uh, define, define the series, or maybe the generation series of the product. So we have, let's say, for example, it could be series two, series three, series four, series five, until you get to the nth number of series that we have. So from the naming rules, let's take a look at what you're going to, to learn for today. So like I said before, we are going to start with uh, the WizMind 5 series, WizMind 4 series, going all through until you get to the wireless series. So WizMind 7, 8, and uh, special series cameras and some other panoramic um, multi multi-lenses camera we're going to find a day for it then invite you for that particular class so the presentation is long so i had to break it down into manageable sections so that we end up understanding uh, the content more clearly so with mind seven eight and the special series with the panoramic camera products we're going to find a day for it for another discussion so we'll describe the with mind series uh, based on this five and four, then go to the Wiz 
sense series we sense describe more on the we sense two and the we sense three series then the entry level series then we'll go back to the full color series then based on the we mind five we mind three so we sense three and we sense two alongside the light entries so these are basically the full color uh, series then we'll add some more information on the wireless uh, series uh, in this regard here we're going to be describing products based that support the wi-fi capabilities and the 4g and 5g uh, network solar cameras so let's start with the wiz mind 5 now when it comes to the wiz mind product line so in this case the wiz mind uh, they're designed to bring you the precision reliability maybe to give you reliable performance and a comprehensive and comprehensive uh, interaction uh, with these particular products in terms of what they're supposed to offer you. So in this case, the WizMind is a full portfolio of solutions composed of the project-oriented products, including the IPCs, uh, we have the NVRs, the PTZs, we have the XBRs, and um, the thermal and software platform that adopts the industry leading deep learning algorithms. Uh, focusing on the customer's requirements. Um, the WizMind provides these three elements, precise, I mean, precision, uh, reliability, reliable, and comprehensive AI solutions for the vertical markets. So these vertical markets are basically some markets that are going to be using these high-end products just to ensure that this uh, will provide a solution for the challenges that this market experience. So we have examples of those vertical markets, such as the governments. We have big retail institutions, uh, energy sectors, because we have different products for the energy sectors, uh, building and constructions. We have different products for them. Finance, uh, we have products for them. Then we have the transport uh, sector again. Uh, we have various products that will uh, be used to okay. give them a solution for the challenges, okay. the experience, or some of the pain points they okay. uh, regularly have. So apart from the vertical markets here, we have the small and medium, uh, medium-sized businesses. So this include, for example, gas stations. We have railways. We have hotels. We have malls. Uh, for example, squares. Uh, just to mention a few of them. So we have different products for these small and medium sized businesses. So for solutions, for all the tools, for example, the vertical and the, the SMBs, we have solutions for, for example, the uh, the human video metadata, for example, stereo analysis. Uh, we have, let's say, for example, the face recognition, the heat map, people counting, uh, the wide area security, for example, giving an all around 360 degrees uh, security. With privacy protection, fast tracking for fast moving objects, it is same. That's for the human application. Uh, for the vehicle applications, we can recommend uh, products that will enable you to achieve the vehicle video metadata, illegal parking, and the automatic uh, number plate uh, recognition uh, products. So on the thermal applications, we have other products which can be used uh, for different SMBs and the different vertical markets. So for example, the energy sectors, uh, we have the gas stations, we have uh, other places, for example, where we have high voltage, uh, maybe hospitals, squares. It is just to ensure that we provide the security for the people at that particular point and the security for the properties uh, at those different areas. So the products which can be used uh, in either of these to provide these solutions for these uh, SMBs and the vertical um, markets. We have the IPCs. We have different shapes, different models, and uh, different appearances for these products. We have the PTZ, we have the thermal products, we have the NVR, we have the XVR, and some other software management uh, platforms just to ensure that uh, in, the, in the event you have all these products in one place, the software platform can be in a position to uh, manage uh, the products in one uh, room. 
So let's take a look at the whiz mind S going downwards. So in this case, Uh, we talk about the whiz mind. Whiz mind S uh, series. So whiz mind S series is an a new series which is an upgrade of the whiz mind uh, five series. So it um, takes user experience to a whole new level in terms of excellent image effect, uh, multiple intelligent functions which can be configured simultaneously. And again, we have let's say for example credible adaptability. And uh, say for example, plastic free uh, packaging, just to ensure that uh, we can conserve the environment. Then alongside providing global client with smart vision and strong shield. So we have some highlights for the WizMind S series. In this case, uh, one highlight is basically excellent image effect, whereby this, um, the products provide AI power imaging, uh, deep light. Uh, deep lighting, so implying that uh, again, in places where you don't have better illumination, the camera will still give you uh, better images because of this AI powered uh, images. So alongside that, we have the image distortion correction. So they have the ability to just ensure that the images are not distorted. If it's a building, the image uh, of the building will actually be um, reviewed the way it is and not any other uh, form. Uh, the product, the WizMind A series, supports multiple AI functions such as video metadata. So in this case here, you can extract different kinds of information from uh, different items which have been captured by the cameras. For example, if it's a human being, you can more, add more information to those human beings. Let's say, for example, you have uh, the gender, the age, the gender, the age, for example, the appearance, of that particular individual. If it's for moving vehicles, again, you can find the cameras, uh, AI functions uh, for the video metadata will extract information such as the number plate of the vehicles, the make and model of the vehicle, the color of the vehicle it is in. Then we have the smart sound detection. So in this case, the camera can differentiate between the human uh, sounds produced by the, the human beings. And again, some of the sounds which are produced by, let's say, for example, breaking glass or some any other kind of uh, noise produced, or maybe sound produced by any object uh, within the area. So alongside that, the support perimeter protection, here you can have different mm -hmm. IVS rules which can be set. We have people counting. Yeah. Uh, we have heat map generation. And again, in this, you can have the face detection, smart object, object detection as well. So these are some of the AI features that come with the WizMind S family product. So apart from that, we have some addition here in terms of our plastic free packaging and again, credible adaptation, uh, adaptability. So the products have dual power backup. So meaning that there's no time you're going to say that the product is offline because they have two channels of uh, power. When one fails, the other channel is basically uh, going to be used as a backup link for power to that particular product. So alongside that, the product supports a dual mic and then a built-in mic. Yeah. So it has a PIRIS, has a heater, there's an anti-corrosion coating. And this particular product support up to four streams. So implying that we have the mainstream and the substream. The substreams, we have some other key substreams. This, for example, substream one, substream two, substream three. Then this supports uh, um, SD capacity of up to 200, 512 gigabits of uh, space, just to ensure that you have enough storage space in the event. Let's say, for example, uh, you've connect, you've not connected the device with your, let's say, your NVR. So some of the products for this particular WizMind S products. We have them as follows. We have some that support some that come with different types of lenses, the very focal lenses, and some come with the fixed focal lenses. So this implying that uh, ones that come with the very focal fixed lenses, those can be manually adjusted. 
can be manually adjusted just to enable you to achieve a different field of view that you want to capture. Then we have the fixed focal lenses. And these fixed focal lenses, they come with um, fixed lenses. This cannot be adjusted. So these are basically uh, aimed to be installed in places where we have the fixed width, uh, maybe um, fixed field of view that does not change uh, any given time. So part of some of the key features for the key features for these uh, products that is an um, AI powered image. Yes. So with this AI powered image. Uh, it's basically uh, the camera uses a lot of AI technology to improve the quality of the video and the snapshots. So in this case, uh, and can restore the details of the targets from the initial uh, key points. Then again, it is equipped with I, uh, AI ISP, that is the image sensor processor. You need to get better video effect in the scenes of low light, backlight, or strong light. Um, environment so in this case it is uh, also equipped with that time division exposure technology which makes the target snapshot clearer and the video metadata function so in this case because suppose the video metadata it can end up extracting more information based on these uh, images which are captured either from the human beings or from the vehicles so we have different uh, scenes here for example can compare between the previous uh, let's say Wisman 5 with the Wisman S in terms of um, better imaging when we have different uh, low levels of illumination and places whereby it's affected by low light, uh, backlight, and the strong light. So for example, um, places where they are overexposed with light. So in the, again, take a look at this, the previous function uh, with the WDR enable. This is what, the kind of imaging that we're going to, to get at the end. So this is a, that is a WDL that flexibly adjust over exposure and exposure and make the moving objects clear and visible. So extract those two different exposures and put them together just to ensure that it balances. Um, and some of the pain points which have been resolved by the use of uh, the excellent image effects is basically see this kind of uh, issues here. For example, different brightness and speeds are the same uh, scene again. So in this case, uh, we have the long exposure. The face is clear, but the plate is overexposed, so it cannot be seen clearly. Then for short exposure, uh, this is what will happen. Uh, the face plate, uh, the plate is clear, but the face is underexposed. So then take a look. the image of the individual for long exposures is clearly, but uh, the plates are basically uh, overexposed. On this other end, in short exposures, you find that now the human is not clearly seen. The image is not clearly seen on the face, but uh, the plate is clearly seen. Now, uh, all this, the WizMind S corrects these features by using this time division exposure. So the brightness and speeds adaptive composure, uh, composite exposure technology. And this case, uh, is basically going to have those uh, imaging uh, effectively are visible and seen to the users. So the product is already has been released uh, last month and uh, it's uh, in due for distribution. So the other bit is uh, for the image effect, excellent image effect. And uh, Uh, with this image excellent effect, it basically corrects uh, the image distortion. So if you take a look at this, this is the original image from a different uh, camera. And we have uh, with no LCD, uh, LDC on. Uh, this is a feature just to ensure that the images are basically um, corrected. 
then the width minus s this is what you're going to have the image is still intact but uh, the, with the previous we find that the image tends a little bit uh, looks a little bit uh, warped in a way so this is not a corrected image so the plane correction effect is more uh, and more loss of the field of view when the LDC is on. But with the Wizmind S, it uh, gives you the better correction effect and less loss of uh, the field of view when the LDC, LDC is on. Uh, multiple AI functions such as uh, video metadata. So, with the video metadata, a new AI function in Wizmind S series utilizes the deep learning algorithms just to detect, track, and capture image uh, of targets. And uh, those targets can be humans, vehicle, and motor vehicles. And then motor vehicles, that is, then selects the image with the best quality and extract the relevant attributes and reports on targets. Quantity can be analyzed by direction and exported by day, either by week, by month, or by year. So uh, this is what we have, let's say for example, uh, these are for the vehicles. Some of the images here are not clear, but we have the vehicles here. We have some information that can be extracted from uh, this particular motor vehicle. So let's say for example, the vehicle number plate, uh, the color of the vehicle, for example here, uh, the vehicle type is an on is unknown. If it's on, it was known to indicate that this, for example, this is an SUV, a vehicle. Uh, this is let's say for example either pickup or something else. But since it's uh, not known, cannot be identified. Now we find that now displays that uh, this is unknown. So apart from that, uh, apart from giving some more information, we have some other details, key details that can be put. Uh, to this information part of the metadata. So if it's a let's say for example um, the human beings we find information such as uh, maybe uh, face that give you face uh, different attributes to the face for example smiling sad etc. Uh, the human body we have seven attributes which can be extracted from the body. Uh, then a motor vehicle can extract with six details and with uh, the vehicles can extract up to seven uh, details from it again. So things to do with the, the human uh, metadata, you find that, let's say, for example, information such as maybe heart, the upper attire, and then maybe what the, the individual is carrying, let's say, for example, the bag or a suitcase, uh, the lower attire, uh, maybe if you have an umbrella, it will distinguish that you have an umbrella, it's seen. Then apart from that, uh, it can dictate uh, your gender, can dictate your age. Uh, it can state whether you have, let's say, for example, um, maybe glasses on, and again, can give the facial trace. For example, you're happy, you're sad, you're calm, it's seen. So when it comes to the value that we get from uh, these multiple AI functions for the WizMind S series, we have uh, statistical reports for and business analysis, attribute-based AI search on uh, the A, the NVR device connected to that particular camera. Then uh, some reporting, we have reporting which can be done, we said before, daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly again. Apart from that, the capacity. So with the capacity, detection accuracy rate is up to 97%. And uh, we can have simultaneous detect of up to 100 uh, targets. So this kind of the WizMind uh, S series products can be uh, applicable in such scenarios such as the square, entrance and exit. And again, important traffic uh, road sections whereby basically want to protect uh, the the humans and the vehicles based on the rules that you've set. They say human beings are not supposed to cross at this particular end and the vehicles are not supposed to pass on that particular end again.
we have uh, the smart sound detection that is a part of uh, a function for the wisman s so So with the deep learning algorithms, smart sound detection can detect the sound of uh, screamings, breaking glass, etc., and uh, timely push alarms to help users deal with the scene in time. So find that such a camera has a high fidelity pickup uh, speaker uh, underneath the camera. And... Um, Now, this is basically going to help the camera capture the slightest uh, noise, which is basically going to be generated by uh, either people screaming, maybe glass breaking, or any, for example, uh, uh, falling bottles it is in. So in this case, a detection type can be glass breaking, maybe some, some other screams, which can basically going to produce those uh, sounds. So a uh, value that's provided by such uh, features for these particular products. It's having um, combination of sound detection and video monitoring can improve the user experience and the surveillance. So it's easier to get to know what is happening around you. So here, what you can you hear what you can see, effectively improve the monitoring uh, score because basically going to uh, dictate the kind of noise produced may be captured by the high fidelity pickup or the cameras. So apart from that, we have some other applications in areas where these um, products can be used. For example, in shops, we have banks, we have campuses, we have communities. So in this case, having such a technology in these particular areas becomes easier for people to detect the kind of noise produced and make an early judgment or some early Early measures just to ensure that um, the scenes are well covered. So perimeter protection is another function, AI function that uh, the Wisman S uh, product provides. So in this case, So with the perimeter protection, we use with the perimeter protection uh, here with a better algorithm model uh, realizes or recognizes the human and vehicle more accurately and provides users with rich uh, with rich detection types of uh, to deal with different applications such as uh, features to do with the tripwire inclusion fast moving parking detection loitering detection and uh, other kinds of gatherings within where we have diff multiple places maybe many places that ends up forming um, uh, some gathering so you can set different rules just to ensure that your perimeters are well protected let's say for example uh, this is a tripwire that has been set showing towards this direction. So uh, any kind of movement towards this direction, it's going to trigger, trigger an alarm. So we have an intrusion again set on this particular perimeter. So you're not supposed to get into this uh, direction. Uh, we have, let's say, for example, again, some intrusion, uh, tripwire drone. Let's say, for example, this is a museum where we have uh, different... Uh, um, pieces of um, art galleries, protecting them by drawing these tripwires. You're supposed to get close to 
uh, these masterpieces here. So in this case, the premium protection, they work based on uh, based on filtering of um, the data based on the humans uh, and the vehicle. So in this case, to reduce uh, false alarms, um, the product is supposed to products comes with the ability of filtering those uh, targets we have the humans the vehicles and these are the ones basically going to to key in uh, those particular uh, alarm triggers so these are what we call the essential alarm filters and essential alarm triggers so what we have here just the traditional ivs whereby all these elements could be uh, in a position to trigger the alarms but with this perimeter protection uh, with the ivs rules basically the items from this end, from where we have the water, leaves, animals, maybe uh, these other insects and the flash bright lights, these cannot produce any kind of balance because they've been filtered on this other end. But on traditional IVS, uh, all these elements could trigger uh, the alarms. So more to these AI functions, we have the people counting. So in this case, let's take a look at this description based on this small scenario here. Hello. So mm -hmm. uh, any time you get into this particular intrusion area, you find that it counts the number of individuals within this other end again. So this can be used to count the number of people and again can use can be used to uh, count the number of queues um, produced by the number of individuals. So this is the third person. We have one queue, so because they're following each other. If we add another queue here to indicate that we have, let's say, three people or four people with two or three different uh, number of queues. So in this case, from what you can uh, get from this function is uh, the people counting line crossing. And again, we have the queue management and people counting that particular area. Let's say, for example, I set a threshold that this area should only have like 15 individuals. If uh, they exceed the threshold, you find now the alarm will be triggered because we have more than those 15 individuals. If, let's say, for example, I set to have, let's say, for example, three queues and we have multiple queues, again, it will end up triggering an alarm. Uh, heat map is another AI function for this WizMind S series. So uh, the heat map again could be could use different colors to reflect the number of targets in an area, and it could be stored according to the same dimension. So in this case, the different color shades are basically going to detect where we have densely populated individuals, or again the places where we've the individuals are basically sparsely uh, distributed. So this is an original image, and this is a heap map uh, image generated by uh, the WizMind S um, product. So we have um, actual target detection. We have business analysis. We have the risk management and. Uh, Basic application areas are areas such as the retail stores and uh, maybe outdoor uh, space. Uh, space. So in this case, for example, the retail can actually give you a heap map generated from where we have uh, people distributed, a lot of people distributed in one area and not other areas again. So the same time, the same case on the outdoor spaces, for example, uh, squares, uh, this can be used just to ensure that we we manage the people within that particular uh, area again. In the event we have more than the threshold set, alarms will be triggered mm -hmm. just to ensure that we have an individual come and uh, assess the situation. So when it comes to credible adaptability, uh, these products, they are guaranteed by the hardware of uh, dual power backup. They have two power inputs. Uh, they have the PIRIS, anti-corrosion coating, and the dual mic under heater. So with continuous operation and 
extensive use of the full time and full scale shield mm. could be guaranteed. So in this case, when it comes to the dual power backup, uh, the product is actually going to be connected by two power input. So this can either be 24 volts or uh, that's the AC and the 12 volts are DC. So when one power uh, maybe goes off, there's another backup link just to ensure that the device keeps on uh, monitoring the environment. So uh, all the IPCs with, with my S uh, also support the dual power, power backup. Uh, we have the P iris, anti-corrosion, and coating again. So through the precise lens, the aperture control to adjust the light input and restore the image authenticity to the maximum uh, extent. That is basically going to be done by uh, the iris of um, the camera. So uh, the iris is basically going to be detected by the size of the aperture. Uh, for example, the F values of uh, the lens. So the better the iris, the better the image quality is going to be captured because that iris is going to be like a window that allows enough light into the camera just to ensure that it makes better images uh, for the users. On the anti-corrosion uh, product models are ideal for options for coastlines or the seaside monitoring environments whereby we have a lot of salty humid environment that can uh, end up damaging the metallic um, casing for these particular uh, cameras. So with the anti-corrosion, it avoids it avoids the instances of whereby the metallic material of the of the camera can end up being corroded. That is, then support the dual mic and again the heater. So supports operating and storage temperatures ranging from negative forty degrees Celsius to 16 degrees uh, centigrade, meeting most low temperature and, and monitoring requirements. So from the WizMind uh, product, let's take a look at the WizMind 4 series. And just like how we started with the WizMind S, uh, the WizMind 4 series comes with two types of uh, lenses for the products. We have uh, the varifocal lenses and the fixed focal lenses. The varifocal lenses are basically some of those uh, lenses which can be adjusted manually to ensure that we have um, the required field of view uh, capture for those particular cameras. Then we have the, uh, the fixed uh, focal. These are placed cameras that the focal lenses cannot be changed at all and they are highly advisable to have them placed where we have a fixed for a uh, fixed width that does not change necessarily over time so some of these uh, product features include um features such as the face detection perimeter protection uh, the smart motion detection 3.0 and uh, this gives you an accuracy rate of 99% uh, provides ai coding in the smart uh, H265 plus and H264 plus just to ensure that you save on a lot of bandwidth at the same time you save a lot on the disk space. Uh, apart from that, supports the anti-flicker self-adaptation. So we'll take a look at these features as we proceed on. So one of the features Okay. Now maybe just I explain them uh, for you because I know to explain the other slide. So in this case, the face detection can actually detect, uh, can mold, then con can compare at the same time, give the result based on what has been compared from the list of uh, individuals, maybe the database, faces in the database of uh, the system. So uh, one thing is basically going to capture the human being, then start molding the different key features that the human the, those unique key features of the human face then starts comparing them with what we have in the database. After comparing them, it gives the results based on what has been 
um, generated. So on the perimeter protection, we have uh, some rules which can be set to that particular point, rules such as uh, the I, uh, IVS rules, such as the tree wires and the intrusion areas. Apart from intrusion areas, we can have such rules such as object missing, object abandoned, uh, etc. So for the smart uh, motion detection, this is basically the ability of the camera to detect that this is a human being and this is a um, vehicle. And uh, to the two targets, the filter targets, human beings and vehicles, then again, we find that the accuracy rates of detection uh, for the smart motion detection 3.0 uh, for this WizMind 4 series is actually, uh, it's actually going to be 99% in terms of accuracy. We have uh, AI coding. This is the ability of uh, the camera based on this AI coding just to ensure that it can um, separate between the static items and the items, uh, for example, dynamic items. So in that regard, you find that's going to enable you to uh, save a lot of this space when it comes to saving uh, this particular item. So the minute it detects that this particular background is static, it only captured it once. Then it will use that particular background until another uh, background changes. At the same time, for the moving object or the dynamic objects, they are basically going to be captured alongside those uh, that one background image that has not changed at all. The event the background image changes, now it takes another background image alongside those dynamic information again. So that helps a lot of um, when it comes to doing the compression. So for the compression part, now with this codex supports the H264 and 265 uh, plus smart H264 and 65 plus. So in showing in making uh just implying that when it comes to storage uh space, it can store, let's say it can help you save up to 75% of uh the disk space in terms of the uh, items that have been captured uh by the cameras. So anti-flicker self-adaptation is just the ability of the, the camera to self-adapt to the different environments just to ensure that it gives you that um, free flow and uh, uh, better images uh, either during the day or during the night again. So from the WizBand file, let's take a look at a different um, series product. That is the WizSense series uh, based on the WizSense 3 and the we sense too. So in this case, just we have a summary of uh, the two. You can take a look at this. So this is the light series that has been released, uh, replaced by the we sense uh, two series. And uh, this has been delisted. What you have at the moment is the we sense two uh, series with these uh, features. So in this case, all the we sense two will always start with uh, let's say IPC2, just to show that this is a WeSense 2, and this is uh, um, the resolution, and this resolution can either be starting from 2 up to 8 megapixels. Uh, this is uh, the generation uh, of uh, the sensors. This is an AI generation sensors, and uh, this supports WDR in terms of uh, illumination, or the WDR function or the starlight function, just to ensure that it provides you with uh, better imaging quality in terms of places where we have low light conditions. So the product, that's the WeSense 2 families, uh, gives you uh, the Smart Motion Detection Plus. Uh, this is uh, going to provide you an accuracy rate of 98% uh, based on the two filters, that is the, the human target and the vehicle target filters. Alongside that, the WeSense 2 product provides perimeter protection uh, through the IVS rules. That's uh, through the intelligent. Uh, video surveillance then provides two video streams that is a uh, one for mainstream and one for uh, substream then all these reasons too come with built-in mic then from the reasons two, just take a look at the reasons three um the, all the reasons three will actually start with three to show that this is a reasons uh, three product and uh, the x here is basically the types of resolutions that the product can handle from two megapixels, four megapixels, five.
sorry there i lost my connection but i'm back so i was trying to explain to you uh what some of these we sense three family products um have so from the naming rule we have a uh, three here that's an ipc can either be an hfw um or a hdw three for we sense three uh, X years just to show that these are different levels of uh, resolutions that the camera can handle. Then this is the generation that is uh, that this particular product's uh, sensor that's an AI uh, sensor. Then in terms of illumination, it has a starlight function or WDR function. So uh, the product supports smart motion detection 4.0 in terms of uh, accuracy on the two targets the human targets and the vehicle target so you compare within the two this is a 3.0 this is a 4.0 we have this elevated uh, higher so in terms of um, accuracy in terms of detection of those two elements this is a highly placed perimeter protection just like the we sense 2 then this supports Um, we sense two does not support quick pick, but we sense three will support the quick pick uh, functionality just to ensure that you can actually uh, look for a certain item based on a uh, certain section items that you, you're picking from those uh, particular things. Let's say, for example, uh, let's say, for example, it's uh, the shirt or the color of the vehicle, basically, going to enable you to get those results a lot more quicker on uh, the artificial intelligent ssa ssa is uh, the cell scene adaptation so meaning that this particular product uh these products what will happen is that they're going to adjust themselves based on the different environmental conditions if uh, the environment is a little bit foggy the camera will adjusts itself just to ensure that it can see through the fog to get to capture the images quality through the rain, the same thing applies. Through, for example, smoke, again, this can going to adjust itself uh, to those conditions just to make sure that it provides you with the clear uh, details. Uh, air coding is another support, just like um, the we sense. Oh, this doesn't support air coding. Okay. So this is another feature that have been added to um, air coding, just like how we have the Wiz mind uh four and the width mind five that is then this supports uh three streams we have the mainstream we have the substream the substreams we have the for example subscript subscript substream one and substream two plus the mainstream gives us uh the three uh, streams so these three streams are basically going to be supported by what we call the real-time uh streaming protocol the protocol that's basically going to ensure that uh, these online cameras, the network cameras will give you uh, instant feedback in terms of uh, the video and audio instead of downloading the audio and video for you to play back at that particular point. So um, the three streams supported by the RTSP or the real-time streaming protocol just to ensure that whatever the camera captures at that particular instance, you can get to hear it from the different devices that you have. Then this product has a built-in mic just to ensure that you can capture the audio from uh, the surrounding. So apart from that, there's one notable change that this particular product will give you 180 degrees wide angle view. And again, it's supported the call uh, the electronic PTZ or the EPTZ function. And this EPTZ function actually simulates the actual functions of the real PTZ. It's only that this does not have the movable uh, object. So for the WeSense 3, we have different um, product overview that comes with different, uh, different types of lenses. And we have uh, the varifocal lenses, which can be manually adjusted. We have the fixed lenses, which cannot be uh, adjusted. Uh, suitable for places where we have the fixed uh, field of view or maybe the fixed width. For example, the entrances, maybe the gates, it is here. And again, we have 
the wide angle um, with sense three products. That's basically going to give you going to give you one hundred and eighty degrees angle view. So then, alongside that, we have the anti oil. So alongside that we have the anti-oil camera, whereby this camera has an anti-oil filter, whereby um, the oil elements cannot hinder the camera from actually uh, viewing what is in front of it. Then the material can be easily wiped out just to ensure that uh, for easy cleaning. So Wissens 3 features uh, are the following. So in terms of uh, events, can uh, provide you uh, Alerts before an event actually occurs can provide you more alerts uh, during the event. And again, after the event, you can use a quick pick function to uh, do a playback of what could have happened uh, during uh, that particular time. Uh, during the event, uh, first of all, it will basically going to use this SMD 4.0 with an accuracy rate of uh, 99%. Then it's going to do the filter targeting for the humans and the vehicles. Now, when any of these two enters into, let's say, for example, an intrusion area, what will happen is that it's basically going to raise an alarm. Now, first of all, it detects that these are human beings. Now, before this human being goes closer to what item is being protected, uh, the camera itself will deter that particular individual from proceeding on to that particular point. I've stepped into this intrusion area, and the camera detected that this is a human being, now, before I go to that particular section that is well protected, now the camera will deter, deter me from proceeding from that particular point. Now, during the night, uh, if let's say, for example, I need to view the images in color format, uh, the smart dual lighting function of the camera will switch automatically from the IR to the LED, or maybe, for example, the warm light, just to ensure that it captures the items in uh, color format. So to warn the intruders, it is actually going to produce the flashing light and again produce maybe, for example, an alarm um, audio just to ensure that it deters the person from proceeding from that particular point. Now, after the event, using the quick pick function, we actually going to improve the efficiency of the search by up to greater than or equal to 90% uh, for uh, easier result generation. So the key features for the WeSense 3 uh, is basically the smart motion detection 4.0 with an accuracy rate of 99%. Uh, for the quick pick function, that is uh, with a combination of an AI NVR, quickly pick up the human and vehicle targets that users are interested in from the smart motion uh, detection events, that is. So apart from that, again, suppose the perimeter protection, uh, this is basically going to uh, analyze the protection based on the smart motion detection and some other IVS rules. Uh, self scene adaptation, um, that's the smart identity scenes of self rains, snows, fog, weather, backlight, flicker, etc. The product will adjust itself just to ensure that it gives you op optimal images after optimizing um, the lenses just to go through those particular weather environments. AI coding, basically pretty for ensuring that you save a lot while ensuring the image quality of the targets is still um, kept. So we have inbuilt mic supported. And again, we have the real 5MP. So this real 5MP is basically as a result of uh, having display into this uh, ratio of 16 to 9. So to better fit the common uh, HD displays and achieve undistorted image uh, performance. So for the smart motion detection 4.0, I think this is already explained, so I don't have to uh, repeat myself. So in this case, only captures vehicles and humans. 
So this being a farm, we have so many animals and each animal can be uh, producing those uh, false alarms. But simply because we can set the targets, to fill the target for only these two elements, human and vehicles, the alarms produced are basically going to be uh, less. That is the false alarm produced will be uh, lesser. So for the perimeter protection again, just the ability of uh, the product to filter out the two. So filtering the two, then again, uh, based on the IVS rules, when they're violated, uh, the alarms will be triggered by that particular uh, camera. So the quick pick function, as we were trying to explain before, you only select based on the, an item that you've selected. And this can only be done if you're using an AI NVR that supports a quick pick technology. Just to ensure that uh, uh, quick pick up the human and vehicle targets that uses the interested that users are interested in. Um, this is uh, the artificial intelligence uh, self adaptation. I believe this again. Uh, this has been explained before. So we just uh, just take a look at it. Then we proceed on from uh, this point on. Okay. So on the AI coding, what I explained to you before, um, that's uh, primarily meant to help to you to save a lot of space while ensuring the image quality of the target is still retained. So uh these are the two object types for h264 encoding and ai uh, coding so on the h265 coding is little is uh, different from the ai coding in that um the camera captures the background and what is in motion then it will keep on saving that redundant background with the items in motion again so we find that uh, this is one particular size of footage at the same time that footage is replicated again on this other end again so implying that we'll have two duplicate uh, scenes with two different uh, image sizes so this will not enable you to uh, do a lot of compression of your data to help you save a lot of space but when it comes to the AI coding what happens the camera separates between the different backgrounds and the dynamic information so if it captures the background here, it's going to set it differently and it's only going to keep another background once it changes. But if the background doesn't change, it retains one background until uh, it stops uh, the recording. So on the items in motion or the dynamic items, this is what will be saved over uh, time because it has a lot of dynamic information each and every time. So you find that between the two, uh, this combines everything just picks the background plus uh, some other dynamic information but this separates the two we have the background plus uh, the targets and these targets are basically going to form most of those um, dynamic information so with this regard this will end up improving a lot of uh, disk space and again when it comes to when it comes to saving on the bandwidth on transmission of the data becomes uh, easily better utilized. Uh, on the large uh, angle view of the WeSense, uh, it's going to give us the following features, 180 degrees angle view, uh, because of where the position of the lens is slightly protruding to the outside, so implying that you can get to have a wide angle view. Uh, the product supports, let's say for example, the APTZ functions. And this PTZ function simulates the actual PTZ fu functions, uh, the mechanical PTZ functions. So in this case, uh, here you can set up to, let's say, three to five target tracking areas, uh, whereby uh, the event rule is violated, so the camera can start tracking uh, those particular events. It supports uh, three, SMB 
um, four megapixel high def definition resolution. And then again, we have Now the products are highly protected against the different, different, uh, different environments in terms of uh, different um, uh, levels of water and dust. We have I IP67. Then again, uh, highly protected against uh, impact. That is uh, IK10. Then uh, in terms of uh, low illumination, the camera comes with uh, different uh, functions. That is the starlight functions called the true. Uh, white WDR uh, functionality. At the same time, the product offers this um, perimeter protection in terms of the IVS rules which can be set. We have the Smart H264 and Smart H265 Plus just to ensure that uh, it compresses the data uh, more just to ensure that you save on a lot of the disk space. Mm -hmm. So here we have um, the HFW 3441T ASP. And again, we have HDW 3441R ASRP. Again, so in this case, this is a this is a, a bullet uh, with sense three four megapixels AI generation and starlight function. So the T here this called that's an IR uh, bullet. And again, this supports audio, alarm, and uh, SD card. So the same case applies to this. This is a um, this is a bundle proof IR dome. So for the APTZ functions, I was talking about um, simulating the actual PTZ. Uh, camera. So in this case, uh, let's take a look at this small clip here just to make understand uh, better. So we have one, two, three, four, five. These are the different uh, target tracking. And this is the 180 degree uh, angle view provided by these particular cameras. So you cannot achieve different target tracking if then it's not supported. So uh, because it supports, we can select different sections that you might want to uh, do auto tracking. So let's say, for example, this individual here crosses a certain line. So the camera will start tracking that individual until he gets out of this particular scene. So this is an example of uh, an EPTZ functionality. So uh, the major view is uh, just a general view, but we have different sections that can be auto tracked by uh, the camera. So uh, filters, humans and vehicles, accurate tracking, basically uh, going to be less than 95%, false alarm rate that is, then this gives us a pan panorama uh, details. Now uh, with details you can see, this other the end. Uh, focusing area, and then again, fast moving tracking with high speed positioning, uh, etc. So the whiz, we sense the we sense two series. So we sense two series comes with the uh, two types of uh, camera lenses. They very they vary focal manual vary focal lenses, and again the fixed uh, focal lenses. So we have different products types, uh, model numbers for these particular products in terms of shapes. Uh, this is a bullet. This is a dome. This is an eyeball. Uh, same case applies to the fixed focal lenses with different resolution types and uh, different generations. So it has similar generation, that's an AI generation. Uh, key features include the Smart Motion Detection Plus. Uh, this is a 98% accuracy rate. Perimeter protection, where we have two functions supported to classify um, for classifications and accurate detection. That is based on the vehicles and the human beings. Uh, the wide dynamic range, so clear details of the environment of a strong bright contrast. Uh, compression, this provides a smart H264 and 65 plus uh, for high encoding efficiency. Uh, then the product supports inbuilt mic, 
sorry, uh, inbuilt support for SD card compartment with um, maximum size of the SD card being 256 uh, gigabytes of space. Then they come with built-in mic at the same time. And they're highly protected against dust and water and impact. But we have some are not protected against uh, the impact. That's why we have an optional end here. So from the Wilson's true, let's take a look at the light entry services. And uh, this is what we have as the light, the entry services. So all the entry series will always start with a one. Uh, Wilson's two will start with a two. Wilson's three will start with a three. The Wiz, uh, Wizmind four and five will start with four and five. If it's a Wizmind seven, start with a seven, it is in. So we have the very focal lenses, which can be manually adjusted. Then again, we have the fixed focal lenses for these products, which can be uh, cannot be adjusted at all on the preferred locations, basically places where we have fixed um, angle of views. So the key features include just like what we had before. So this supports Smart H264 and 65 plus, uh, supports no plugins uh, that are required. They are cost effective, they are easy to find and that uh, gives the real time monitoring during the day, during the night. The entire week then again this provides excellent image quality See. so the best places which can be used to to have this implemented or installed to provide solutions basically sections such as the retail relations places we have buildings we have banking and finance we have airports and uh, other substations for uh, the transportation industry so let's take a look at the full color services and uh, with this full color series, we're going to have a discussion confined on the Wizmind 5 full color 2.0, the WizSense 3. Uh, that's the TIOC, the 3 in 1 cameras 2.0. And again, the WizSense 2 series smart door lighting and the entry series full color. So, to begin with, we'll take a look at the comparisons between the different uh, series. We have the one series, two series, three series, and the five uh, series. So in this case, the one series, that's the entry level. We have the two series of the Wilson's two series. That's the, um, that's the new full color error. And again, IPC3, that's the Wilson's three. That comes with the active deterrence uh, with full color. And uh, the Wilson five, that's a full color flagship. And uh, we have different products. So going back to this entry series, as we move on to the Wizmind. So with the entry series, full color, we have the 1239 series and 1439 uh, series. So this comes with different uh, housing. We have the plastic housing, and the metallic housing, and the uh, the entry series products to support the built-in mic. So uh, with that, we have the Wizmind 2. So this Wizmind 2 provides us with the dual uh, light, smart dual lighting. So that small dual lighting is basically going to be uh, identified by this IL feature on the modding, the naming rule for this uh, product. So we have 20, 2249 IL, 2449, 2549, and 2849. So these are 2 megapixels, 4 megapixels, 5 and 8 megapixels. So they have the same AI generation that is uh, for this particular four. And let's show that this is a full color camera with the smart dual lighting. So with this smart dual lighting, basically the camera can use uh, less of warm light and less pollution. So the camera do not provide the higher light and the warm light at the same time. So it keeps on interchanging between uh, the two. So on the IPC3, we have the active deterrence full color cameras, and uh, these are three in one uh, camera 2.0. So we have uh, different information for this. Take a look at this PV at the end of this naming models to show that this is an active deterrence uh, product. So this comes with three types of resolutions. That is a uh, four, five, and eight megapixels. Same AI generation and uh, the full color 
uh, function. Mm -hmm. So this three in one comes with the active deterrence, smart dual light, and active uh, sort of artificial intelligent mm -hmm. uh, feature into one product. So for the WizMind, this is what we have. We have the 5449 series and 5049 uh, series. So this product comes with dual lens. Uh, it's a 4K resolution. Uh, it's optical zoom. It's basically enhanced. And this again can give you a panoramic view of 180 degrees because of the dual lenses. So full color 5 series products. This is what we have. We have some for 4K. We have a uh, very focal in terms of uh, the lens type. And again, the fixed focal in terms of the lens again. So if you take a look at onto this, the next slide. So the full color for uh, 4K camera uh, that has either one or 1.2 inch size uh, CMOS sensor. So this ensure that the camera can capture a lot of light in just to ensure that it make, gives you those particular better images in terms of either video or the images. So most of these functions include a 140 dB WDR that gives you like um, Uh, better imaging and uh, the display um, 4 megapixels uh, sorry 8 megapixels of 4k uh, focal length is basically going to be either 2.8 millimeters 3.6 millimeters and 6 millimeters depending on the um depending on the appearance of the camera so this will give 3.6 millimeters that's a bullet then for this eyeball of the dome will give uh, 2.8 millimeters uh, of the focal length just to ensure it gives you this wide angle view. So this will be 3.6, yet it will give you a narrow uh, field of view. Illumination distance the, is uh, going to give 60 meters uh, for the 6 millimeters. Uh, this supports a mainstream of this resolution at uh, 25 to 30 frames per second in real-time monitoring. Uh, the products as well have built-in mic and speaker to realize two-way communication talk between the people at the scene and the people who are placed away from remotely from where the devices devices are so we have just comparison between uh the one and the one 1.8 inch size sensor and the one to 1.2 inch size sensor So during the night, the 4K resolution, a comparison between the 4K full color and the 4K IR uh, color. So the full color, uh, in this case, this uses the warm light or the white light just to illuminate uh, the surrounding, just to ensure the camera gives us, gives us uh, color images. But uh, the 4K IR uses the IR light. So as a result of uh, the IR light, you find that the light, the place becomes reflective because they are of the IR light. So when it comes to viewing the number plates at the parking lots for this particular vehicle, find that it's not going to be clear because of those reflective nature of the IR light. But uh, simply because this uses the warm light, the plates are basically going to be clearly seen. Uh, we have the dual splicing camera that's for that provides 180 degrees uh, angle view. So this is what we have. Take a look at this uh, short video clip here to get to see the information more clearer. So that's, uh, we have this angle of view. So the images can be stitched together and be spliced just to give it this uh, field of view angle splits as uh, seamless as uh, splicing. So the dual lenses each uh, of the two images can be joined together to form one uh, bigger image. So with this kind of products, they support uh, built-in mic and speaker. You can see at the front face here, we have the speakers. 
uh, we have the dual uh, warm lights for each and every lens that we have here. Warm light, the white light on both ends again. So for the varifocal, full color varifocal cameras, uh, they come with a 1.0 aperture uh, with 2.7 to 12 millimeters of focal length. So in this case, uh, because it has our, an F value of 1.0, the aperture becomes uh, bigger just to collect enough lighting during the night to ensure that it provides you with better image uh, qualities. So that's why we have a bigger aperture. Okay, so when it comes to the TIOC 3 series, um, this TIOC will come with the following uh, lens types, the fixed focal and the varifocal lenses. And let's take a look at some of this information provided here by uh, the fixed focal lens. So this supports resolution types from 4 megapixels, 5 megapixels to 8 megapixels with an aperture value of uh, an F value of 1.0, implying that that has a bigger uh, aperture. So, um, they'll support the smart dual lighting and active deterrence with AI uh, feature in it. Uh, smart motion detection 4.0, quick pick functions uh, with the use of an AI NVR, then again, self scene adaptation. Then we have uh, the varifocal lenses. Uh, Z here to show this is a motorized lens, then again, active deterrence series. This comes with these features just like the ones that we had on the fixed focal lenses. Key features for the TIOC cameras suppose the 4.0 4.0 smart motion detection quick pick function with an intelligent N uh, NVR perimeter protection one tap arming or maybe disarming for those notification events sent to your mobile phone through the VMSS application. Then we have AI, self scene adaptation, support smart dual lighting, built-in mic and speaker, then again, the real 5MP by display screen uh, with the ratio of 16 to 9 for undist un undistorted image performance. So what we have is just a description of uh, trying to show the illumination for this particular um, TAOC product. So we have the different changes when it comes to different illuminations. For example, here I told the air light is on at night uh, simply because you don't have anyone here at the mountain area or at the rural area. Uh, we have the white light uh, with turns that turns on the PTZ tracking when the target appears. So in this case, the white light will appear just to ensure that we can capture the image in quality and uh, color images. That is, then the minute this individual goes to the rural area, now the active deterrence of this camera will be activated. And I will warn the individual based on these two red and blue light at the same time, an alarm. I may, for example, those notifications, um, the customized alarm messages. Then once the intruder goes out of this two rural area and the mountain area, the camera automatically switches off uh, the warm light and the lights to go back to the IR light. Then we have the small smart dual lighting cameras. And uh, with these smart dual lighting uh, cameras and the kind of cameras that um, supports the smart dual lighting can switch between the IR, the warm light, or the white light again. So, and how to the to distinguish the smart dual lighting cameras basically by this IL 
feature at the end. So this is a, a bullet, uh, we sense to two megapixels, AI generation, full color. Uh, T here describes the appearance of uh, the product. That's an IR bullet that supports uh, audio alarm and SD card with IL, the IR and the LED uh, lighting. So we have different brands for this particular uh, product. So the same case applies, it's going to give us uh, some output just like for the active deterrent. So only that this now does not provide the red and the blue light. So a short video just to illustrate how the smart low lighting uh, is applied. So the IR mode is light, the IR light is on. Once an intruder gets to this particular scene, now the camera switches automatically from IR to home light for them to get to see the images in full color. Now that's for the outdoor. For the indoor scenes, the same case applies. So initially it's black and white because the IR is on. So once it detects that these are human, then again, what it does, it activates, switches uh, the white light just to ensure that to produce the color images. So once this individual leaves the room, it switches back from I, uh, from white light to IR. So for the entry series, for the entry series, this is uh, the products that we have. Uh, we have products that have uh, simple installations, uh, easy operations and high performance and again cost uh, ratio. So in this case, we have these kind of products that have either metallic or plastic housing. This is supposed to give you full uh, 24 hours, seven days a week full color monitoring. And the cameras have um, an F value of 1.6, so implying that the aperture is bigger enough to capture enough lighting to generate colorful images. So we have different product models here. Alongside that, the first three elements uh, items, the product supports the built-in mic. So all the ones that have the A within the naming models supports a built-in mic. For example, this model, this model, these two models, and all these models that we have here. So let's take a look at the wireless products. So the wireless products, we take a look at uh, the Wi-Fi series, 4G and 5G solar-powered uh, camera in brief. So these are the kind of cameras that we don't require us to have uh, the physical linkages of maybe physical uh, cables running along to connect to these uh, products. So in this case, we have different um, wireless product series. For example, what we have here, we have a bullet, we have a turret, a bullet, a dome, etc. So in this case, this is a HFW1230DT. STW. So by the naming rule, here we have this is a bullet, uh, one series. This is an entry series, two megapixels. Um, the generation this is a H265 generation. Then again, this is a standard uh, function. DT. That's basically uh, the appearance of this particular uh, product. So the T here. That's sure that that's an IR bullet. Uh, this could be an IR eyeball. Then ST, that's for SD card, built-in mic and speaker. I've sent the W here to show that this supports uh, Wi-Fi. So for the 5G and the 4G, so for the 4G, and 5G um, solar power network cameras. We have these two products here. We have from the WeSense 2, we have the WeSense 3, and then we have the WizMind R5. That's for the 4G, 5G solar camera. So in this case, uh, the DG here shows that this is a non-POE uh, bullet, non-POE bullet, 4G. Uh, signal reception, this solar pod for the Latin America, and that uh, this for a different region again. 
So for the wireless series, there comes the following features. Two-way talk, motion detection. Remember that this is not smart motion detection. This is just motion detection. Its ingress protection is 6.7. Then again, supports um, wireless, Wi-Fi support. And the maximum SD card is basically 256 gigabits of storage. So the applicable sections that this can be applied is basically on the retail stores, restaurants, stations, courtyards, places that you don't expect to have any kind of wiring uh, in place, just wireless connection. Then for the, we have more other wireless series. That's uh, this come with metallic casing, supports human detection, supports motion detection, uh, its ingress protection is highly rated against water and dust. Then supports Wi-Fi connection. And, uh, the maximum SD card support is 256 uh, gigabits of uh, space. So the application scenario is similar to the previous uh, models. On this wireless series, one minute, confirm something here. Okay. So on this product series, uh, this supports a uh, dual band Wi-Fi enabled that can either be 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz of uh, the wireless frequency band. Supports smart floodlight. Smart floodlight uh, supports a local storage of 256 gigs of data space. And uh, this supports human and vehicle detection. Then again, this will support uh, active alarm. And uh, its protection is not that highly rated from the other uh, products. This is a uh, IK65. Places applicable to discard residential areas, uh, driveways, or maybe, for example, uh, doorway, just to monitor the events at that particular point. So alongside uh, all this, this supports a uh, smart H2, sorry, H265 plus and H264 plus just for the purposes of compressing the data to save space on uh, these 256 gigabits of uh, storage space. And again, this can, uh, you can access the product uh, through its uh, web, uh, web interface or the application, that's the DMSS, just to do some quick configurations. Uh, for the product itself. So for the 4G and 5G has these particular features. Uh, one main feature is basically the uh, long life standalone uh, system. This with a, comes with a built-in 5 watt solar panel and uh, has an air battery capacity of 10,000 milliamps. Uh, this gives, comes with two different modes. Uh, working modes, we have the sleep mode and the general mode um, just to ensure that uh, you can save a lot of battery power in the event, uh, let's say for example, you don't have enough sources of light to power the battery through the solar panel. So this is support to it to communication because it has a, a speak and an inbuilt mic, then again, can use different channels for telecommunication. That's but Basically, we work with the 4G. Then again, this has a PAR. You can see it from this other end, this PAR uh, detector, just to ensure that it can detect uh, motion. And then when the camera is in sleep mode, after the PAR detects motion, the camera wakes up and starts recording. So these cameras are basically meant for outdoor activities and places where we cannot run the cables from one point to another point. So the same thing applies with this other type of uh, wireless camera. So this is a not of solar power, but basically a wireless uh, camera. So this has uh, three working modes, general, sleep mode, and power saving mode. Two-way to communication as a peer detector. And again, support smart motion 3, SMD 3.0 with perimeter protection. So this is a highly advanced as compared with the previous uh, model. 
So these are 5G product model for the wireless uh, camera. So this supports up to uh, 8 megapixel, for example, 4K resolution, uh, supports different network architectures, supports 5G modules. Uh, this has illuminator. Uh, numbers that is for for IR for for the warm light and again has dual speaker and mic and this supports key air functions such as face detection people counting perimeter protection smart object detection and the heat map so this is a uh, slightly um, has a higher performance than the previous uh, wireless models so this is the last bit of today's presentation. And in case you have a question, you can ask. If you need this presentation, you can always drop your email address. I'm going to share it with you just to get to learn more at your own time, at your own uh, speeds again. So thank you so much for being part of uh, today's presentation. I'm hoping you've learned quite a lot of information based on the IPC uh, product categories. So thank you so much. If you have a question, you can raise it. If you need the presentation, just drop your email address. I'm going to help you out on that. If you have a question, you can raise your hand or leave a question at the chat. So thank you all. I'm going to end the session. I'm going to exit everyone from the, the meeting. Uh, we'll meet the next time. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.